Hello everybody and welcome to this week's Easy 11 Plus live lesson from me and from Dimitri. Dimitri's possibly a little bit calmer than sometimes because I got him some new fishing rod toys today. He loves those and with the new ones he's feeling a little bit tired out so perhaps he'll hang around a little bit longer than sometimes. You never know. Always oh, getting wriggly already. Wonderful to have you all here. The um, chat, the live chat for this week's lesson. Oh now he's biting me. Okay maybe he's like, ah, look at that. Look at that. The live chat for this week's lesson is for subscribers only. So if you want to take part in the live chat, just click on, click, click, ow, bite the subscribe button right underneath the video, and then you get to join in. A uh, big welcome, especially to everybody who's new here today. It's fantastic to have you. I, <coughs> ow, ow. I hope you find this week's lesson really, really useful. Um, the worksheet for today's lesson is behave yourself. The worksheet for today's lesson is linked in the video description down there, and off he goes. Um, Dimitri's already done the worksheet. He feels that this is a big waste of his time because he already knows all about nonverbal and spatial reasoning. Loads of new things in the members only area of the channel uh, this week, including question by question video solutions for what is there so far? A new this week, Seven Oaks Maths. Uh, from their newest sample paper. I've gone through each question and solved it for you and shown you exactly how to do it. Also stuff there for St Paul's Girls School, for GL and CE CEM exams, for Solihull School, for City of London School for Boys, for KES Birmingham. Uh, I'm about to put out a load of stuff for Dame Alice Owens. There's loads and loads and loads more stuff in the members only area of the channel. Also members get things like pens and pencil cases. Um, and all kinds of good benefits um, at certain membership levels. You can even send me work for individual feedback. So loads of stuff there for members of the channel. Right, let's get cracking with um, some nonverbal and spatial reasoning. By the way, if you want uh, lots of other useful things, many of them completely free, just go into the video description under this video, and there are lots of useful things there for you to click on and explore. Okay, uh, one thing I should say, by the way, is for some reason that I do not understand, there is no power coming into my little uh, tablet that I use for writing on in this lesson. So I'm very much hoping that its battery is going to survive throughout this lesson. If the battery runs out, it might bring the teaching part to a premature hope. Hope? Premature halt. You can only hope. Um, right, okay, let's get cracking. So we're going to start with reflections. Choose the figure on the right, which, that should say that, slight grammatical error, is a reflection in the dotted line of the figure on the left. So how do we go about doing this? Well, let's just look. We can see in the example this is the right answer. It's already been selected with the bar underneath. Let's talk about why it's the right answer. So here's your mirror line. How do mirror lines work? Well, we take each thing on the left-hand side of the mirror line, and we go to the mirror line by the shortest route. So, for instance, um, if we look at the bottom of the e here, let, ear here, let's take that. So we go to the mirror line by the shortest route. It takes us to there. So that line forms a right angle with the mirror line. And then we go the same distance the other side. And then you draw the same thing, but the other way around. That's how mirror lines work, okay? It's really, 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 really simple. That's how reflection works in, you know, whether even if it's a mass exam and you have to draw your own reflection, you're just going to the mirror line by the shortest route with a line that forms a right angle with the mirror line, and then you go the same distance the other side, and that's where the thing appears, but the other way around, okay? So that's the principle we're always going to be working with here. But we'll be looking for shortcuts so that we don't have to draw the whole thing from scratch. Okay, um... Coconut says, Roblox is kind of cringe, but because I'm internet trained now, thanks to you guys, I know that Roblox is not me. Roblox is a gaming platform. I've, I've never tried it, though, so, you know, there are limits. Okay, question 11 down here, because we start with question 11, because that's how we roll. So, we need to find the reflection of this shape here. You can see me working with the same images down here on my tablet. Very sophisticated. Okay, so what can we do with this? Well, rather than just doing lots and lots of complicated reflection, let's make things simple. Let's look at the right-hand side and say what things are obviously different. Well, I can see that these things down here are not all the same. So we can see on the left here that this here is pretty close to going straight up. It's only at a bit of a slant, whereas this one here is nowhere near going straight up. So there's no way that A can be the answer. The others, though still look possible. In fact, they're all the same in that regard. What about if we look, uh, oh, I can see some difference up here. Look at the way that this part of the shape is different, depending on which one we're looking at. Okay, so let's look over here. That's one big, chunky, solid thing. If we look over here, 
it's a kind of M shape. So that's different, so it's not B. So just by spotting things that change, we can eliminate options without doing any reflecting. And that's the key here. Get as far as you can without really having to reflect stuff, and life will be easier for you. Uh, what can I notice as difference between C and D? Well, if I look at, hmm, oh yeah, what about this area here? These are rounded and these are spiky. So on the left, are we rounded or spiky? We're rounded. So it's not the spiky one, this is wrong, and so C must be the answer. So although the basic principle of these is about reflection in a mirror line, in fact, you can rump your way through towards the answer often without actually doing any reflecting, just by looking for things that are sort of basically wrong. Okay, I love the comment from Chani Wang saying, listen to Robert, exactly, everybody should listen to me. Everybody should listen to me. Thank you for the people, to the people who are subscribing so they can take part in the chat. Um, I hope subscribing helps you anyway because it means you'll get notifications about new videos and that kind of thing and it makes you more part of the channel. It also helps me to spread what I do because more people subscribe to my channel the more that YouTube shares my videos. Fantastic. Okay, question 12. What have you got here? Um, again, oh, I look in straight away, I see that A has got this line here, which isn't on the left, so I can eliminate it, okay? I see that C has moved the dots here down to the bottom. That's wrong. I can eliminate it. So I'm just going through looking for stuff to get rid of straight away. Okay, B and D are really similar. Really similar. These two dots here, I go to the mirror line, I take them about the same different distance the other side. Okay. So are they going to be like B or are they going to be like D? Remember the other thing I said, things go to the same distance the other side, but they're the other way round, okay? In B, these two dots are the same way round. So it must be D that's the right one, because here we've got the two dots, but they're this way round rather than this way round. So they've done the correct thing that you do when you're reflecting in a mirror. If the whole business of mirrors is really confusing for you, two things to say. One thing is, get used to just doing the method. So you take your things, you go to the mirror line by the shortest route, and then you go the same distance the other side, and if you've got anything more than just a point, you switch it around and do it the other way. Um, but also go to a mirror and practice this thing. Put some things against it and get used to seeing how this effect occurs, because that will then help you to understand more intuitively what's going on with this kind of exam question. Can my cat Mia have a shout out please? Absolutely Evanash, Mia can have a shout out. Hello Mia, I'm glad to have as many cats as possible watching the channel. Um, perhaps Dimitri will come back and say hello to him when he discovers how many cats there are currently viewing. Question 13. Okay, so here the bar, you've got a bar behind this sort of half spectacle with a kind of a little mini bar at the end of it. So let's look through. Well, A, we can see that the mini bar actually touches the circle, whereas in the thing here, there's a gap. So A is wrong. B, the bar is on top of the circle. Circle, I've called it, it's not a circle, but okay, on top of the, the half spectacle. The monocle, let's call it a monocle, okay? C, that looks kind of okay. D, the bar has moved down, and that's not right. So D is also wrong. So we get to C without even checking the details, just by getting rid of the wrong ones that are wrong. So one of the lessons I'm really trying to teach you about reflection questions is that very often you can get through while doing no reflection or very little reflection. Okay, that's really useful. I'm always in favor of finding ways to do things that save effort. And I know that some people struggle with reflecting, but the good news is that you often don't need to reflect at all. The happy panda says, that's a relief. Ah, two gamers says, but I'm not subscribed. You must be subscribed or you wouldn't be able to comment in the live chat. You're probably a subscriber, but not a member. Um, so uh, the chat isn't members only. It will be in the future when there are enough members. Um, members are people who pay a certain amount to get extra content um, and to get things like pencils and pencil cases, to get special emojis that they can use in chat, that kind of thing. Um, so that's what members are. Subscribers are just people who completely for free click to subscribe and it means that they get news about the channel, they find out when I put new videos up and they get to, at the moment to join in the live chat. Uh, please be polite to each other, everybody. Um, but also if you find the chat distracting, don't forget you can actually minimize the live chat. There's a button that just hides it. And if you minimize the live chat, you can just watch the lesson without being distracted as well. Okay, carrying on. 14, so again, 
we can easily do some easy elimination. A has got rounded bits, whereas the example has got has got um, right angles, so A is wrong. Uh, B, you can see that it's symmetrical. These two bits stick out the same amount. That's not the case over here, so B is wrong. Okay, D, the kind of bar that's sticking across um, across our ellipse has moved down, so that's wrong. So again, without doing any reflecting, we can see that it must be C. Absolutely flying. Right, what can we do with this? Um, we can see C must be wrong because this lozenge has mysteriously jumped down to the bottom, so we can't be having that. Now, again, we look at what we got here and we say, what are the obvious differences? Well, in D, let's look at this kind of fallen over T. I'm imagining a T that's like this, but it's fallen over, so you're going like this, and it's got sort of twisted. This is exactly the same way round as on the left. Okay, but we're reflecting, it shouldn't be the same way round, so it can't be D. Okay, A and B look super similar, what's the difference between them? So I really have to study A and B now, okay, together, to say how are these two things different, and then I spot it, it's down here. B, the lines cross over properly, whereas in A, they don't really. And we look at the example on the left and they cross over properly. That's like B. It isn't like A. So B is our answer. Okay? So you can do a huge amount of reflection without reflecting. And that's the big message that I want you to get. Okay. Pushing on to the next one. Jenny says, you're cool, Robert. Thank you for the compliment. Um, I am very much not cool, but I'm delighted to have conned you so successfully. Um, okay, right. Um, ooh, the colours are coming out a little bit sort of washed out on your screen. Uh, they look fine on mine, but they're coming out sort of yellow over there. Sorry about that. I don't know why that is. Anyway, let's do what we got. We still got the question. Let me zoom in a little bit to try and make that as big and clear as possible for you. Yeah, that's better. That'll do. Okay. These are really hard to explain, and they're quite difficult questions. You have to be really, really systematic. I'm going to try as far as possible to show you how, you how you approach them if you're not really good at turning these shapes around in your head. You still have to do a bit of turning around, but let's try and be as systematic as we can. Just like with the previous ones, I showed you how to do them even if you don't really easily reflect shapes in your mind. How can we do these if manipulating 3D shapes in this kind of spatial reasoning problem is not really your bag? Okay? Michaela says that she gets them. That's great. So you're really fortunate if you naturally get these. There are some people who are really smart who just don't. Um, that's one reason I hate this kind of exam. I think it's really, really, really unfair, but I've given that rant before. So, um, yeah, I'm getting a mix of comments. People, um, Anuradha saying um, you're good, you're good, that she's good at spatial, which is wonderful. Um, David, I doubt that's the spelling of your name, but who am I to judge? Um, hates this topic. Okay, um, Ashwini is a watermelon. Um, there's a wide range of views on these, so let's get stuck in. Right, so what can we do with this? Well, let's just look around and see what ideas we can take. So A, the options are A, it's all straight things and unit cubes. I'm going to use the, I'm going to use the phrase unit cube. By unit cube, I mean a cube that is one by one by one, okay? Um, so little unit cubes, we've got two of those and we've got these long straight lines. But let's look at the image on the left. We can see it's got this big twisted L shape here. And that, you can't do that just with these things here. So that's wrong. Okay, what about the others? Now we go through looking and seeing what we can do. So all the others have got at least one L shape. Let's start playing around with them. So we've got this L shape here. You can see that that bit of the L is here. And then the long bit goes down the back, so it's been twisted and turned upside down. So we've got one of these, which is that. Okay, and now we've got this section here. How can we account for that with these other bits here? So where would this go? That could be here. Yep, because this is... We can see that one block is like that, so this is one, two blocks. Okay, so that could be... So this could be B lying on its back like that. And then we've got, what have we got? We've got this here, which is one, two, three long. Now nah, there's nothing left here up in B to do that. Okay, so B cannot be the answer. So we're being, I'm being really systematic. It's the way to do it. 
Okay, see? So we got this matches this. We could have this matches this. But then what are we doing with this? Um, so that's three back, that's right. But then where's the end bit going to go? It can't go around the back here because that's the bottom bit of the earth. So that space is already taken. Um, it's no, not underneath, it would be sticking out the bottom. No, it doesn't work either. So it's going to have to be D, but let's check, okay? Always check with these because you could easily make a mistake somewhere. They're really tricky. I find them tricky too, to be honest. So that there is that, okay? Then, so we could have that this is this, okay? That's lying on its back. But then we got two individual little dotty things left. Hmm, that's not going to work. So, what can we do next? We could have this one up here. And then we could have this one round the back there. But then, no, this isn't a single dot. This is too deep. D doesn't work. We crossed them all out. So what's going on here? Has someone, has anyone got this and realized someone has? I can see your right answer in there. I'm not going to say who it is because I want to say what it is. Let's have a look at some of these again. We know it simply cannot be A. There are no L-shaped hooks there. We know it isn't D because we just looked at that one exhaustively and ruled it out. Let's look at C and B again. Well, C, it's just not possible because there's this space round the back here, behind, out of sight, back here, which boat, which would be the bottom of one of these and the end of that hooking around the back in the same space. It, it's either none of these or it's B. Let's look at B really carefully. Okay. L, L. Okay. That shape and that shape match. And now, let's think about it. We said that if this is an L-shaped piece, this has to be a thing that's three long and neither of these are. So we crossed out B. But what happens, and this is why these are so, so difficult, what happens if in fact the other L-shaped one here is lying on its side, going one, two, three back, and then round the back out of sight behind there? This is this, and this is this. And so actually, B, Mr. GC, oh, Mr. GC, you have the right answer, but for the wrong reason, because I've just seen your comment saying it's because you can fit the cube in the back. Now, the cube doesn't go in the back, it's the end of this that goes in the back behind there. That's what goes in the back. So tricky. Kind of interesting though. Kind of fun in a way. Um, people asking for shout outs. I've got a kind of rule now that I don't do shout outs um, except for people's pets, especially cats get shout outs and often if I notice. Um, and also particularly when people say things that are really interesting. So if you make a comment that I want to refer to, then of course I'll use your name. But I won't give a shout out just for you saying shout out my name because then that's all the people write in the comments they say can I have a shout out can I have a shout out and that stops the comments can contain useful things so that's why I don't do it okay uh, this one here there's something slightly weird in how this sheet worksheet's come out that these edges of these shapes um, look faint you can't really see the edge ignore that that's not part of the question that's just that's just a printing error or a kind of PDF formatting error um, anyway okay Coconut asks, what is Obama's last name? Is that a serious question? Is that actually a question? Um, Amir says, my cat died. I'm very sorry to hear that your cat died, Amir. Um, my cat Hans died just over a year ago, and it was very sad for a very long time. A uh, shout out for Jimmy the dog. Um, I mean, bearing in mind that this is a cat-run channel... Um, I'm not sure how comfortable I feel doing shout outs for dogs, but then again, I don't think we should be encouraging speciesism. And so whatever Dimitri might think, and I know that Dimitri wouldn't approve. Sorry, Dimitri. Um, here's a shout out for Jimmy the dog in the spirit of friendliness and cooperation between cats and dogs. Right, on to question 27. Not that we've done 27 questions here. It's just because I've pulled these questions from other worksheets and these were the original question numbers. Um, so... Oh, that's another horribly difficult one. 
What can we do with this? We can see that there is this shape that is one, two, three high and goes back one, two that way, okay? You can see that it goes back one, two because we've got one, two of depth, okay? So that's like this and this and this and this and this, okay? So all of these options contain at least one of those. We're gonna have to go through systematically and try these out. It's really slow when you're just practicing, but as you get better, you'll find that you can do these more and more quickly. Is there anything else we can use to do some eliminating here? What about, I mean, this and this, not quite so, so interesting as shapes. I think this shape behind is quite interesting though. So let's look at it carefully. It goes one, two, and possibly three across we can't see. Okay, so it goes at least two across there. How far does it go back? Does it go one, two back, or does it go one, two, three back? Well, let's look carefully, okay? This is where you need to use your logical working out mind, not just your kind of it spatial instinct. When a shape goes one square back, it goes this far, okay? This far. This clearly goes two back there. So the whole distance this way is three squares, three units, okay? And going across here, it's two or more. So we need something that's three units long. Well, obviously these are three units long, but that doesn't make sense here because it has a, it's an L shape. There's only one shape in this whole razzmatazz that could be that shape, and it's that one. So the only possible answer is D. So that could have taken us ages if we'd just gone through saying, okay, this is this, now we try the others. Okay, that's this, now we try the others and so on. But if we just find a quick way to eliminate, we can get straight to the answer. I'm sufficiently conscious of these being tricky that I'm, um, I've got my answers here to consult just to make sure that I don't make a terrible mistake. Um, <laughs> someone here says, I love cats, I have one as well. Shout out, please. Nice try. Nice try. I need some evidence of cat here. Um, that's a little shout out for you that you want. No, I can shout out for your cat though. Um, ah, okay. I'm going to shout out um, the lizard, Obama. Okay. Yes. A shout out for Obama. Great. Does he give good speeches? Um, okay. Are you doing Kendrick school in members only videos? It is on my list of schools to cover. Yes, I haven't done it yet, but I am planning to. So become a member and you'll have some Kendrick stuff pretty soon, I think. Um, in fact, Kendrick, I think they do, yeah, they do um, multiple choice comprehension, don't they? And I've already got GLCM style multiple choice comprehension in the members only area. So yes, there's already stuff that's very, very Kendrick-ish. Right, I believe. Okay, moving on to the next one. So still some slight PDF formatting errors with, for example, not seeing the left-hand side of that. My apologies. Okay, what can we do with this? So looking at this straight away, I can see that there's one very long thing here. Again, let's do the trick. We can see something that goes one back is like that. So it goes one, then two, then three. It's at least three long. Maybe it's even four long, okay? But it's very, very, very long. So where do we have very long things? We've got them here, we've got them here, we've got them here, okay. Um, all of those are nice long shapes. Um, yeah, that looks like it's four long actually, doesn't it? Because it's longer than this and that's three long, so this must be four long. Um, and this here, well, it can't be this because it isn't like that because you can actually see that there's a line in between here showing that you've got different shapes and there's nothing out the side over here, because you can see. So therefore, this must be one of these ones that are four units long. So therefore, we can rule out option C, if that makes sense. What about option A? So this here could be that. But where do we put that? There's nowhere else to put one that's four long here. So it can't be option A. We can only fit one of those in. Option B, let's have a look at that. So this here could be this. We've got a unit. A unit cube there, which is that. So now we've got these two left. What can we do with those? So we could have this one as this one here, and we can have this one here going round the back. So in fact, 
This one works as answer B. Often I talk about trying all the options to make sure. With these, it takes so long to try each option. If you're confident with them, and if you get the answer, and you're pretty sure of it being the answer, I think you might accept that and move on and not waste time trying all the other ones. So D we haven't checked because we're confident of option B being the correct answer. Um, onwards. Quite a few of these here because I think they're really worth practicing because I know a lot of people find them really, really hard. Um, ah, we've got a Barack Obama thing. We've got Barack Jr. saying, I have to leave, so bye. Hope to see you again. Lovely to have you here. Thank you for joining the lesson. Um, and um, yeah, and it's nice to have you here linking up with your lizard, with the lizard Obama. We've got Barack and we've got Obama. Um, what have we got? The Gilkes family shout out to Katrina, my fluffy cat. Absolutely. I'm delighted to shout out to Katrina the cat. Um, will this come in the GL assessment? I can't remember specifically whether these come up, but might well. Um, are you going to cover St. Olav's based questions this year? Yes, almost without a doubt. Um, cats, Debbie wants a shout out for her cats. Grudon and Kyogre? Kyogre? I don't know whether that is that a Japanese name. I've got no idea, but, um, and I don't know how to say it, but uh, hello. Sony, the hamster, gets a shout out. Hello, Sony. Um, do you have to do any videos on Henrietta Barnett? The thing about Henrietta Barnett is they have some really kind of um, common styles of exam. Uh, so they have um, they have very you know standard style multiple choice exams in the first round, and then they have quite conventional written exams in the second round. So I don't think I need to do Henrietta Barnett videos. Almost all my videos are relevant to Henrietta Barnett. So if you want Henrietta Barnett stuff, look at everything on my channel, pretty much. Um, the other says, sorry, Robert, I'm late. Very polite of you. Um, it's lovely to have you here um, at any time. Um, okay. Um, Bonbon the bunny gets a shout out. Hello. Um, and a shout out to the cat in somebody's garden that isn't theirs. I don't think they'll hear the shout out, to be honest, unless you've got this turn up really loud and your window wide open. Um, okay. Um, my mum says she will tell me if I can play after this. Yeah, it's holding out on you, not telling you. Um, I used to have a cat, his name was Lionel. Um, Lionel, rest in peace. Okay, uh, and I like the I like what somebody is attempting, getting a shout out for their pet human who happens to share their own name. Nice try, not quite. Right, onwards. Um, so, uh, someone wants a shout out for a cat with a possibly slightly rude name. Oh, I think that might be trying to... Um, lead me down a path of no return. Let's have a look at question 29 here. So what can we do with this? Well, 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 well. We have various things here. Hmm. We've got a unit cube back here. Have they all got unit cubes on the right? Yes, they've all got at least one unit cube. Okay. We've got this here, which is an L. You can see that this here is more than one deep. So it's two, sticks out two places there. So uh, this is one of those. And where are the others? There's one down here, but there isn't one in B and there isn't one in C. Great, this is elimination. So we're down to A and D being the only ones that contain that shape there. Okay, what can we do with these? Well, let's have a look at um, A. So this long thing here is going to be that. Let's say this is going to be that. This is going to be that. Okay, all well, that's quite easy. Um, and now we've got this here would have to be along the back there. And then this would have to be this. So it kind of fits, but, and now you have to look very close. Let's zoom in. Imagine you're holding this, holding this up to your face and, and sort of staring at it really closely. That's what we're doing here. Let's have a look here. You can see that there isn't a line across there. These here are part of the same shape. So if we zoom back out, zoom. Starting to, this is such old, this tablet I write on, it's such old basic tech uh, with so little processing power that it starts to overheat during the lesson. I can feel the back getting hot and it goes slower and slower the hotter and hotter it gets. Um, anyway, it just about does the job, just about, as long as the battery doesn't fail during the lesson, which is my concern because the power cable isn't charging for a reason I do not know why. Anyway, <sighs> calm down, Robert, calm down. Neither, neither of these things here allows us to have that shape around the back that we can see that we need. If we go to D, we have this here is this. We can have this as this. Of course, we got this as this. We would establish that. And this here 
is the dum, the shape around the back there. So D works. So the difference between D and A is so subtle. It's just about whether this block at the back is joined on to the thing that goes across or whether it's separate. So difficult. Okay, I've deliberately made these questions really difficult with tiny differences. Sorry, but so you really have to work on your skills and think about how you approach questions like this logically. Is this the last one? Yes, it is. It's the last one of this section. Okay, so concentrate and you will make out, you make it out of this alive if you concentrate. I'm talking rubbish, so you're used to that by now. Um, Ray wants me to cover the Nedstead exam. I have to be honest, I haven't even heard of Nedstead. I don't know where that school is or what the exam is like, so um, I'll have to look it up. Um, can I make an impression of a fish? Is that good enough? Right. Um, Pichu versus Pikachu. I don't know who Pichu is, so I guess I'll have to use Pikachu, unless it's Maku Pikachu. Um, who knows? Um, oh, we explained. Lionel got taken away, sadly, because he wasn't ours. He came to our garden and didn't want to leave. You stole somebody's cat. That's what you're saying. You stole a cat. Cat thief. <laughs> um, only joking. Hey, Skittles. Shout out to Skittles. Right, so we've got this thing here, which is three, uh, come on, draw. There we are, Told my, said my computer was overheating, that's one of these L shapes. But we've got that in here and here and here, ah, oh, but not over here, so we can cross that one out. Excellent, so now we're down to A, B and D, so the elimination starts to power along its way. And now it gets really tricky, so let's see um, what we can do. I'm not sure about D, because D, yes, we've got that, which is this. But then if we look behind, what can I see? I can see one, two, three, four, five, six, at least six cubes. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, they would work, but then that's gonna have to be what, like this behind, and then this will have to be like that, but where's that cube behind coming from? I can't do that with D, and no, D isn't gonna work. Okay, so I can get rid of D by making one hell of a mess. Um, always do these kinds of things, doing your working with pencil because you're gonna have to rub it out between goes, otherwise you're not gonna have a clue what's going on. Okay, we're between B and A. What's the difference between B and A? Well, A has got this, this T, B has got this thing, these things to look out for. B's also got two of these big L shapes. We're gonna have to try out, okay? Let's have a look at, uh, what should we go for? Let's go for, let's look at A, okay? So this is this. This shape here would have to, it's going to have to be across the back here, isn't it? How to show this? It's going to have to be that line across the back. So one, and then the one next to it, and then the one next to it, one, two, three, and then this coming forward. And then this one is going to have to be this going back like that. I think that works. But I'm not confident enough not to look at B because there's quite a lot of stuff going on behind out of sight there that I'm not too sure about, okay? So I think it's A, but I'm not certain. And in that situation, I do look at B. Now I look at B, okay, this is gonna be this. This here, that's gonna have to be, um, it's gonna have to be those three along there behind and then coming forward, no, I can't because there's a line between these, so they're separate shapes. Okay, could it be along the back then up? No, because this is 2D. I can't see anywhere to put the second of these shapes. It's going to be A. The answer is going to be A. It has to be because none of the others work. And there we are. Moving along. On to the next. You know what? I feel like a quick break. So let's take a quick break for the... So the tip of the week this week, giving all of us a break, is that, um, what am I talking about? Is a little bit of maths. Um, people often say, what topics do I need to cover? Well, there are lots of topics you need to cover. It, but it's, the, it's the primary school math syllabus, and really you need to know all of it. However, if there is one thing, after you've got your times tables really well sorted, after you've got your basic paper calculations sorted, so you can do your addition, your subtraction, your multiplication, your division on paper, what should you look at next as being really basic, really fundamental? Fractions, decimals, percentages. 
So if there's one thing in your maths to really make sure, to really shore up, it's things like your fractions calculations. Can you um, divide two fractions when one of them is a mixed number? Can you convert a fraction into a ratio or a decimal? Can you change a percentage into a decimal? And can you then turn that into a fraction? Can you turn any fraction into a decimal, even if it's a really horrible fraction? So this kind of area around fractions, decimals, percentages, ratios, that is your next thing to really focus on when you've got your times tables and your basic, your basic paper calculation methods down pat. Right, that's the tip of the week. Now let's get back into polishing off these questions. This is the last set of questions in this week's um, reasoning paper that we're looking at. So let's look at this. Now the thing about these is you're given a certain setup but you aren't given any idea of what sort of rule there is. The question says, choose the hexagon on the right, which goes best? It should be that goes best. It's an old grammatical mistake from these old questions of mine, sorry. Um, in the empty space on the left. It doesn't say anything about what the rule is. It doesn't say that we have to go round in sequence. It doesn't say anything, really. You have to play with it and work it out. We don't know whether the middle shapes can have anything to do with the price of fish or not. We just have to play with it. And so we can see about these here, well, they look kind of like mirror images or reflections of each other. So there's some ideas to play with. And at this point, we're just going for ideas to play with. Let's look over the other side. I mean, this middle shape here, it seems relevant to these. It's hard to see how it's relevant to these. So let's ignore the middle shape for the moment. We might need to come back to it, but let's ignore it for the moment. So I'm just coming up with things to help us get away through. And now we say, well, clearly opposites. There's something going on with the opposites here. They have something to do with each other. These two here, hang on a sec. I take my tablet or my bit of paper, I turn it round a little bit, and I think, hang on, if I draw a line down there, that's a mirror line for those two, isn't it? Right, let's look at these two here, which look pretty similar. So I imagine a line along here. Yeah, that's a reflection too. So can I find a reflection of this to go up here? Well, if my mirror line is running across here, that means that what's on the top down here is going to end up on the bottom, and what's on the bottom is going to end up on the top. So this white bit is going to end, it's going to end up on the top, being white, and it's going to end up with a grey bit on the bottom. White on the top, grey on the bottom. Which of these options match that? Uh, a does, white on the top, grey on the bottom, and D does, white on the top, grey on the bottom, B and C don't. Okay, so A and D. Now, it's reflected in this line here, so we're flipping top and bottom. We're not turning it side to side. So it's still going to have the claws pointing to the right. So that's this one here and not this one here. So the answer is going to be A. OK? So elimination, again, is my friend. But I started off there just by playing with ideas. And my starting point was just looking at these and going, these look kind of maybe sort of reflections or um, uh, or something like that of each other, uh, rotations maybe. Um, and that kind of got me into it. Okay, next one here. Numbers. So I look at these and I say, what do these numbers have in common? The middle one's a question mark. I think that's just a space filler. I'm gonna assume that unless I find that I need it. Ah, coffee, essential. Right, what have you got? You've got one, nine, no, these are different. One, four, nine, 25, 36. Now, if you don't recognize these numbers, you're gonna be a bit stuck, but of course, you're, you've been working on your math, so you do, these are square numbers. One times one is one, two times two is four, three times three is nine, four times four is 16, five times five is 25, 6 times 6 is 36. We are missing 16. 4 times 4. Okay, so this is going to be 16. Great, so we look for 16 over here and, oh, that's almost everything. <gasps> what am I going to pick? I mean, this looks like 16 here, doesn't it? But then again, hang on, 25 is nearly upside down, 9 is nearly upside down. These are all done, so the bottom of the number is towards the middle, towards the question mark. So we need a 16 whose base is towards the question mark, okay? Not a 16 that's the right way up from our point of view, not a 15. If I look at this from upside down, you can take your, take your paper and turn it upside down. I'm not going to turn my tablet upside down because I might accidentally disconnect it from my main computer I'm streaming from, and that would be a bit of a disaster. Um, 
But if you turn it round, you would see that A here becomes 19, whereas D becomes 16, and that is the one that we want. Well, hey, we're flying. How many more are there? Two, three, three more. Okay, three more, and then we're done. I'll take your questions, and then we'll be finished. And then I'm going to go climbing, because I really feel like it. Um, it's gone flat off some energy on a climbing wall after all this. Okay, what can we do with this? So we can see on the left here that we've got this crazy line that goes round, but it just carries on, okay? Um, and um, yeah, it looks like it's one continuous line. None of these points have just one line going into them. None of them have more than two. Wherever we've got a point corner on this line, we have we have line going in and a line coming out. That's what I'm trying to say. We can also see that whenever you get to the edge of a hexagon, another line comes out on the other side from the same point, although very often in a slightly different direction. We, are, we can't be absolutely certain that the same things will happen in our blank one here, but it would be pretty strange if they set a question where the rules suddenly all change just where we can't see them. That would hardly be very fair. So we can be reasonably certain that those things are going to apply. So when we look at A here, you've got three lines coming into that point. Something that happens nowhere over here, I think we can rule out A. We got B, okay, um, maybe C, maybe D, we've got something that's shaded in. Nothing here is shaded in. Why would they start shading it in, in the hidden hexagon? Yes, examiners are horrible, they're very bad people, um, but they aren't that evil. Now we've got B and C here, and the other thing we said is that the lines, when they meet the edge of a hexagon, they emerge into the next hexagon from the same point, okay? And we can see the difference between B and C is here that we're meeting the edge at different points. So this point would be equivalent to that, and this point would be equivalent to that, and there's no line going in there. Whereas if we look at C down here, this point's equivalent to that, and this point is equivalent to that. So it does meet, and so I like C an awful lot more that is going to be the answer. Um, Craft up wonders when I can cover the St. Olav's exam. Um, other people have, at least one other person has already asked that in this lesson. I've already said yes. So, um, in fact, there's a lot of stuff already in my channel that's really like the exam. In particular, look at anything on poetry comprehension, on a long answer format comprehension. If you go to the playlist on my channel homepage, that's, what's it called? I should know, shouldn't I? It's called something like, um, oh no, I've... I think it's called something like advanced comprehension, or maybe it's just written comprehension. Anyway, I've got some difficult videos for, for written comprehension exams. They will generally be highly relevant to the questions that have often been set by St. Olaf. I've got a long comment here. What does it say? Um, um, okay, I'm going to take questions in a sec anyway, but I'll answer Ramesh quickly, um, who says, Robert, I really find it difficult in my exam. I am, I'm unable to complete the paper in the given time. My mock, any suggestion would be helpful in English and maths. Um, Rather than answering that in full now, I would point out there's a video on the channel that's dedicated to this particular question. Um, and the cover image has got several of me in yellow shirts whizzing by, I think. Um, so anyway, if you go on the channel and search for timing, um, you'll find this. Just a tip, by the way, for anyone who's looking for particular kinds of videos in my channel, if you just search YouTube for Easy 11 Plus and then put the keyword that you're searching for. So in this case, if you put Easy 11 Plus timing, uh, you should find that video easily. The 11 is 1-1, one, one, not the word 11. Um, so word to the wise there. Okay, onwards. Next one, I think we've got two left, yeah. Okay, so what's happening here? We've got shapes which have different numbers of sides. We have, and they're in these spaces here, we've got stars with different numbers of stars, and these appear to ultimate, alternate around the outside. I think it's pretty likely that we're going to end up with a group of stars here. The question is, what sort of group of stars? Now we look to the right and see what's going on. It's not going to be that one. Um, well, the main thing that differentiates these options is the different number of stars. A has seven stars, C has three, and D has six. Okay, what number of stars? Hmm. Let's see if there's any relationship between the shapes and the number of stars. So this shape here has got one, two, three, four sides, and here there are four stars. So I'm already hypothesizing a rule that 
the number of sides on the shape matches the number of stars in the um, in the hexagon that's opposite. Now we test that hypothesis, so that rule that I'm guessing, with this pair here, okay? So I come up with a guess, then I test it. If it passes the test, then I try to apply it in finding the answer, okay? Ingenious. So this shape here has got one, two, three, four, five sides, and this has got five stars. So I've taken my hypothesis, I've tested it, it's passed the test, and now I'm going to try and apply that to actually finding the answer. So we go to this shape here, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sides. Notice how I'm counting sides by crossing them off. Strongly recommend that because otherwise it's really hard to be sure you haven't counted the same starting point twice. Okay, seven here, and look, A is seven stars, so that's going to be the one. So, yeah, nice bit of logic there. We've come up with something that looks like it might be the case. We've checked it and it does seem to be the case in one instance. We've then tested that on another pair, confirmed it, now really likely, then we see whether it can find the answer, and it does. And now the very last one. Remember what I said earlier about how you can do a lot with elimination. So you could spend a lot of time working out what is happening to the grey shapes here. You can see they're kind of turning as you go around, and you can start trying to work out where it belongs. But if you have been sensible and looked at these first, you'll realise that there's absolutely no point doing that, because the grey shape is exactly the same in all of the answers. So even if you find out where it is, it's not going to help you. I can tell you where it is, it must be like that, because that's the only option we're given on the right. So you don't waste time doing that. But if I look at the answer options, I can see that A has got this thing where the stripy shape is actually on top of the grey shape which doesn't occur anywhere on the left, so A is not the, right, not the answer. Oh look, I've eliminated one. Right, okay. We can see that now we've got the line shapes either this way or this way. Okay, and we can see that B and D have got the stripes running differently. The stripes are in slightly different directions, even though the stripy shape seems to be pointing the same way, more or less. So, Let's see what the figure over here can do for us. So are these stripy shapes turning around consistently? Maybe, but then I notice something else. Hang on a sec, look at that and look at that. They're not in the same place in the hexagon, but they're aligned the same and the stripes go the same. So now I've got this hypothesis that opposite ones are going to be the same, even if in different places. And now I take these opposites to test it. So this here, it's at that angle, and this is also at that angle, and the stripes in both are horizontal. So I've tested my hypothesis and confirmed it. So now I can be virtually certain I'm looking for a shape that's like that, okay, that way around, with stripes going more or less this way. And now I look at my answer options, and there's only one that matches that, which only one option matches that, and that's option C. And so with a very high degree of confidence, I can select C. So the big lesson from this one is, don't just get obsessed with working out what the rule is on the left. Keep an eye on the answer options, and see actually what possibilities are being given to you. Because there's no point spending ages working something out, such as which way around the grey shape is, when in fact, that's given to you anyway, and there's no point working it out. And there may be something really simple, like the way they overlap that you can use. And, you know, going through that, you can save yourself a lot of time. The answer, of course, is C. Um, C. Shichar says, Dimitri is smart. Um, Dimitri would agree with you. Um, and the fact that Dimitri can understand your comment and agree with it um, suggests that at least he's not a complete and utter moron. Okay, fantastic. Let's pop in and just take a few of, if I can work from my streaming, so that's it, finding the option in my streaming platform, a few of, of your questions. Okay, um, what's going on in the questions here? I've dealt with some already. Um, Sir Robington Lomax the Great, what does CSSE stand for? I'm sorry, I'm struggling to concentrate on your question, just past the wonderfulness of how you've addressed me. Um, you want to know what CSSE stand for, stands for. It stands for um, con the Consortium of Selective Schools in Essex. I hope I've made your day. Um, okay, Jenny says I'm cool. Um, thank you, Jenny. Um, I, uh, yeah. 
I'm not going to... I wouldn't dream of arguing. Vijayan just writes, creative writing, please. I think I did creative writing, wasn't it two weeks ago? I did the dialogue session. So, I mean, I do keep doing creative writing, but I try to mix up the different areas that I cover. So it will be, you know, another two or three weeks before I do more creative writing, I think. Can I cover Merchant Tylers? Um, if such a school existed, I would consider covering it. Okay, I shouldn't be snarky, sorry. Merchant Tailors, you're typing on your phone probably. Um, I may well cover some Merchant Tailors stuff, but also their exams are like lots of other exams. So loads of stuff on my channel. It's highly relevant to Merchant Tailors. To be honest, I can say that for virtually any school. Sorry, I need to blow my nose because it's very itchy. This is going to be loud, so I'm going to silence my mic. Anyone with headphones should be thanking you, thanking me right now for silencing my mic, because otherwise you would be having you'd be suffering from eardrum damage. Whoa, the comments are flying in. So making the comments subscribers only um, didn't have much of an impact on the number of people here. It was great. Everyone subscribed and are commenting. Aha, my cunning plan. Uh, shout out for my cat Alfie. Hello, Alfie. Haven't I already given Alfie a shout out? Um, it's a very helpful letter, says Farwa. Thank you. Le letter? Lesson. Uh, thank you. Um, shout out to my chicken, he lives in KFC. I'm sorry to break it to you, but he probably doesn't live anymore. Um, but he was very tasty. Do you cover different subjects? This is clearly someone who's new to the channel, and maybe they found the channel through this video. So, go to the um, Easy 11 Plus homepage, which means clicking on my face under the video, and you'll find squizillions of videos for squizillions of subjects. Squizillions of subjects? Not quite that many, but quite a lot. Uh, yes, I cover all the 11 Plus subjects. Um, please do facial expressions. I mean, how would I not do facial expressions? Can you do VR next week? I don't know what I'm doing next week yet. I haven't decided. I think it will be maths. How old is Dimitri? He is five months old. Virtually exactly. Um, oh, I did a facial expression again. Yes. I, in fact, I can't stop doing facial expressions. I'm very bad at not doing them. Um, lots of people eating someone's chicken. Okay. Um, um, someone says, how long do pencil cases take to arrive? Normally two or three days from when they're posted. Obviously, if you become a channel member at Dimitri level, which is the second level up, you get a free pencil case. Uh, but you do have to get in touch and tell me your name and address. Otherwise, I can't post it to you. Um, so just just joining as a member in itself doesn't get you on. You have to join as a member and then send me a message so that I know who to send the pencil case to. But yeah, two or three days would be common. Um, two or three working days. Can you do some CSSE papers, please? Um, I've done lots of CSSE style questions already, actually, uh, if you look at the channel. Uh, but yes, I will do more. Um, tricky maths, please. Yep. There's lots of tricky math as well, by the way. If you go to the channel homepage, there's a special playlist for, it's called something like advanced maths or hard maths, where I put all my horrible maths videos. So that's what you want. And I will definitely do more things that belong there. Um, I'm gonna finish, I think, a last question with Shobo's question. How do you overcome stress? Well, there are lots of things that you can do, but the main thing I'd say is this. If you are somebody who is here watching this video, anyone who's used to my channel knows what I'm about to say, because I say it a lot, but I think it's really important. If you're somebody who is here watching this video, you are already one of the really motivated, hardworking people. Most people preparing for 11 plus are not sitting here on a Tuesday night watching these videos. They are less motivated people. They are doing other things like, I don't know, not studying. So you're already one of the, one of the elite of hard workers. And so, yeah, it's possible that the exams don't go well. It's possible that you don't get into the school that you really want to go to. And you know what? It's barely going to matter because you're already someone who works really hard. You're already someone who puts in extra effort on a Tuesday evening. Whichever school you end up at after the 11 plus, even if it's a school that you don't really think is that great, you are going to do really, really well at that school because you're the kind of person who is here now. And therefore, you don't need to stress. Yeah, sure, if you're bright but you don't get through the 11 plus, it's a bit embarrassing. In a few months, nobody's going to know or care. They're not even going to know that you sat the 11 plus. You're just going to get on with your life and you're going to do brilliantly. So don't worry about it. There are bigger things in life to worry about. Okay, um, someone wants me to call Dimitri. I'll call him and see if he comes. If he comes, I'll show you. And if he doesn't, I won't. Dimitri! Dimitri! Come on, Dimitri! Dimitri! 
I don't think he's coming. I think he's outside on the balcony. Sorry, guys. Anyway, um, I'm just going to end where I started this off uh, by quickly saying, if you aren't yet a channel member, you're missing out because members get things like free pens, free pencil cases, special emojis they can use in chat, but they also get loads and loads of videos just for members, including question-by-question -question walkthroughs for Seven Oaks and Paul's Girls, GAL, GL and CEM exams, which is most grammar school exams, uh, Solihull, Hole, City London School for Boys, King of School Birmingham, I'm about to put some up there for Dame Alice Owens, uh, I'm going to have loads more stuff for common exams, there's going to be stuff for CSSE definitely, I think I'm do doing some Kendrick stuff soon, Kendrick's quite typical in his questions actually, so it's not that unique, but you know, because people have asked for it. Um, basically that area is getting chock-a-block with hundreds of videos on individual questions for specific schools, um, so that's a really useful feature, I hope, for channel members. Um, and these will be useful even if you're applying to different schools because the skills carry across. So if you haven't tried being a channel member, give it a try. If you don't find it useful, you can stop being a channel member at any time. Uh, it's really cheap um, and you get a huge amount of benefit. Um, in the meantime, please like this video, please subscribe to this channel and tell your friends about these lessons and bring them on, along on a Tuesday evening. And if they can't come on a Tuesday evening, they can watch these lessons anytime. I'll see you next Tuesday at six o'clock because it is always a pleasure to have you. Um, and what else could you possibly do with your evening? That would be better. It's bye bye from me. It would be bye bye from Dimitri if he was here. Where have you gone, boy? What could you possibly be doing? I think he's chasing flies, probably, which, to be fair, is probably more exciting uh, for him. How do you become a member, asked DT? Okay, that's a question I will answer. Um, there's a link in the video description. If you're watching on a computer, there's a button labelled Join right underneath the screen. Click on that and you'll get the options for becoming a member uh, at the different membership levels. Um, and that's how you find out about it. Um, yeah. That's it really, or you just put slash join after the web address for my channel. All right guys, fantastic to have you here. I'll see you next Tuesday at six o'clock. In the meantime, click on the video I'm gonna stick so it pops up here next to my head to continue your learning. And yeah, hello to your pets. Bye-bye. <laughs>